And now, USA Radio Theater presents 14, written by Alex Gerstenberg and produced by Travis Onyet. Open to a dining room of New York residents. In the middle of the room sits a long table, perfectly prepared for 14. Dunham the butler is giving it a few finishing touches as Miss Pringle walks in. She is a woman of fashion. Although she may be easily excited, Miss Pringle is very executive and humorously charming. She walks in carrying a bouquet of flowers and the empty box of paper she wrapped them from. Dunham, I've just had word from Mr. Harper that he was called away to the bedside of a friend who's very ill. He sent me flowers. It's a good thing he did. I didn't approve of young men refusing dinner invitations at the very last minute. I'll take the box and paper, Miss Pringle. It's too bad, after you've said it all so beautifully. And it's going to get late. Someone might be coming at any moment. How's Cook? Cook's in a temper as always, madam. I'm glad to hear it. She's like an actress. The better the temper, the better the performance. As long as she serves us a good dinner, I don't care how she swears. The rest of you can just keep out of her way. Where's Gustav? I'm sorry to have to say it, madam, but there's such an awful blizzard out. He's sweeping off the sidewalk. Oh, dear me, yes. I should have ordered an awning. But who'd expect a storm like this? Here are the place cards, mother. And the diagram. Shall I put them around? Yes, dear Elaine. I'm going up to look after your father. He's so helpless about his ties. Remove one plate, Dunham. Remove one plate, madam? Oh, madam, it is a certainty. You wouldn't sit down with 13. 13? Why, you're right, 13. We can never sit down with 13. That's all due to Mr. Harper's negligence. Sick friend, nothing. He's just one of those careless men who never answer their invitations in time. His flowers indeed to make me forgive him. Now look at the trouble he's put me to. 13? I wonder whom I'm going to get to come in the last minute. Quick, Elaine, help me think. There's always Uncle George. He never opens his head. Mr. Morgan, madam. He's always telling a joke or two. Why, yes, Dunham, that's clever of you. Hello, Central. Lakeview 5971. At once, please. Miss Morgan's, well, this is Mrs. Pringle speaking from across the street. Yes, well, Mr. Morgan comes in. Please tell him to call me up right away. I want him to dine with us in about ten minutes. You can expect him. Now, if he shouldn't get it, then what will I do? Well, Mother... I don't have to be at the table. It's your party anyway. Everyone's married and older than I am. Didn't I put you next to Oliver Farnsworth? Millions. He's worth millions. Well, he won't be giving me any. Can he marry you? Aren't you going to try to make a good match for yourself? It's no use, Mother. You're trying to marry me off to anyone as important as he is. He frightens me to death. I lose my tongue. I'm as afraid of him as I'd be afraid of the Prince of Wales. Prince of Wales? Oh, what would I give to have the Prince of Wales in my house? New York has lost its heart to him. I was just telling Mr. Farnsworth yesterday that I'd give anything to have the Prince here. I would establish my social position for life, and I have such a reputation for being a wonderful hostess. Oh, dear me. The phone. Hello? Mrs. Sedgwick? Yes, this is Mrs. Pringle. What? No. Oh, no. Caught in a snowdrift. Can you get another car? Oh, that's a shame. I'm heartbroken. My own reduced to tears. Goodbye, dear. I'm glad she dropped out. Central gave me Lakeview 5971. Dunham with two less. You could say two cocktails and at least four glasses of champagne. The liquor is getting low, madam. What with prohibition and entertaining so much. But, mother... If you only have 12 people, father can't sit at the head of the table. But he has to sit at the head. It looks too undignified with the man of the house is pews to the side. There's no other way. There must be a woman at each end. How absurd. I always forget, of course, 12 is an impossible number. I don't want to put any of these women at the head. There's Mrs. Darby. I wouldn't give her the honor of Mrs. Answer it, Dunham. Hello? Miss Pringle's residence. A message? Yes, sir. What, sir? Mr. Darby. The doctor says your baby has a chicken pox. Chicken pox? Elaine? Mother? Yes, sir. Mr. Darby sends his apologies, but owing to the transmutability of the disease, Mr. and Mrs. Darby feel obliged to regret, and also their house guests, Mr. and Mrs. Fleetwood. That's four out. Then you're only eight. Quick, the plate. Done. Don't we know someone to invite last minute? The Hatwoods. They don't serve drinks when they entertain. I can't afford to invite them to drink mine. The Greens? She's not interesting enough. Mr. Conley? He never makes a dinner call, even after the times I've invited him. 
Hester Longley? Not at the same table with you and Oliver Farnsworth. She's too pretty, too clever. Where's our book? The Tuppers? The Tuppers. Good heavens, Elaine. Six in the family. That would get us back to 14. Then father could sit at the head of the table. We'll try them. I'll rush and tell your father to hold up the drawing room. Bridgeway 325. This is Elaine Pringle. What Tupper am I speaking to? Oh, Ella, hello. I hope you haven't finished your dinner. We had a party arranged here at the last moment and everyone's been dropping out. The blizzard. Can't you flock your family around the corner and eat with us? Mother and I thought we knew you would well enough and you would like to call at the seventh hour. You would? Oh, fine. Six more plates, Dunham. What? Oh, well... But... Dunham, get Mother quick. Yes. Yes, of course. Love it. Why, certainly. Yes, my dear. All right. Great, Caesar. Now what have I done? What's the matter, Lane? Now I've done it. I've just done it. But I couldn't get out of it. I just couldn't. You weren't here. I always loomed my head and bungle things. But what? Don't keep us waiting like this. What is it? I invited Ella and the family, and she accepted. And then she said that they had two house guests. And now we're at 16. 16? But, madam, the table's not that long. Elaine, that's just like you. Not tact, no worldly wisdom. If I'd been on but the phone... But you weren't at the phone. You ought to attend to such messages yourself. You know I always lose my head. But the dishes, madam. We only have 14 squabs. I won't eat any. But I must not be disgraced. We'll have to make the best of it. But, mother, I needn't sit at the table. You're going to sit right next to Oliver Farnsworth now. I don't wish to hear another word about it. But can't we squeeze them in without all of the work of adding another board? If I move the plates and the chairs closer... Haven't you forgotten that Mr. Tupper weighs something like 250 pounds? And Mrs. Conley has no waistline. It can't be done. Cook is in a rage, madam. She says she has only prepared for 14. I can't help it. She'll have to prepare for 16. Tell her to open cans of soup and vegetables and... But the ice cream forms and the gelatin molds. I'll pretend I don't like them. I'll pretend I'm on a diet. But I really wouldn't have to be at the table. Be still. The telephone. Don't answer. It's driving me mad. Hello? Yes, this is Mrs. Pringle. Oh, yes, Jessica. What? The blizzard? You're cold? Too dangerous? Oh, Jessica, you poor dear. Yes, your husband's right. It won't be foolhardly, but put on a mustard plaster. Hot toddy. Go to bed. So sorry. <coughs> Wonderful. Now we're just 14. But the cards are all wrong. Only six are coming who were originally invited. You'll have to make another diagram. How do you want them seated? Give it to me. Here are some fresh cards. What a mess. I spent hours over that diagram. So much depends on it. There's the front door, Dunham. I told Annie to answer it for you, but go. Peek into the drawing room. Tell me who it is. You're murderous instrument, now. What do you say? Now what? Hello? Who? Mr. Farnsworth? Mr. Oliver Farnsworth? So, no, you're his secretary? He's what? Instructed you to make his excuses. He had to leave for Boston. One of the most important businesses. Oh! How dare he? The last moment like this, no regard for a hostess feelings, no regard for the efforts she goes to provide an evening's enjoyment. And such a good dinner I planned, and what he promised he would come business. I don't believe it. He didn't want to exert himself, was afraid of being in the blizzard. Selfishness, downright rude, and worth millions. Just match for you, Lane. And I was bound you should meet him and sit next to him at the table. And now, I don't speak to him when I, I gave you a chance. Like that again, I'm perfectly furious. I'll never speak to him again. I won't be treated this way. Perhaps he really did have business and was called away. And one of the most important hostesses in the city. People clamoring to receive my invitations. All my affairs are a success. I insist they shall be. I can bear a failure. I will not have a failure. He was the most important guest, and he's such a man's man. So important financially. Every other man considers it to be an honor to meet him. Now not coming, I'm furious, furious. It's all this damnable blizzard. Now I will have to stay away from the table. His not coming makes us 13. Again. Go to bed. Go up to the nursery. I'll send you milk and crackers. But mother, it's not my fault that he had business out of town. Yes, it is. If you perked up a bit and not be so timid and make something of yourself, he would hear about your attractions from other men and be curious to meet you himself. Oh, what a family I have. No one to help me with my ambitions. Go to bed. I certainly won't be sit down to 13. Go to bed and get out of my sight. It was Mr. Morgan, madam. 
Mr. Morgan, but I telephoned his maid to tell him not to come. That makes you 13 again. Unless you don't want me to go to bed. Of course I don't want you to go to bed. We're back to where we started 14, Dunham. I'll get the cocktails ready, madam. Annie told me there were several motors making their way through the snow. It's late now, and Cook's swearing about the dinner getting too dry. I won't answer it. Hello, what is it? Yes, yes, Mrs. Tupper? But now you must come. We're prepared for you, yes. For the eight of you, your daughter told me about your house guests, and we're delighted to have them. But now we're set for you... But every plate is set. But your daughter was quite right. It wasn't an imposition at all. But you must come now. Of course my daughter has authority to invite guests. Oh, eight isn't at all big number. There's room. The table is all set, but I beg of you. But my dear, you are not opposing. Oh, but how foolish of you to take that stand. Why, my dear, my dear. Now, what do you think of that, Mrs. Tupper? But it's perfectly furious at Ella for telling you about the house guests and say Ella has no tact, that nothing would induce her to bring eight when we invited six. So she's leaving, Ella, and Henry at home. Only six are coming. Remove two plates, Dunham. We're twelve after all. But if you leave it at twelve, father can't sit at the- I shall go mad. I'll never entertain again. Never, never. People ought to know whether they're coming or not. But they accept and regret and regret and accept. They drive me wild. This is my last dinner party. My very last. A fiasco. An utter fiasco. A hapsard crowd hurried together when I planned everything so beautifully. Now, how should I seat them? How should I seat them? If I put Mr. Tupper here and Mrs. Conley there, then Mrs. Tupper has to sit next to her husband. And if I I want Mr. Morgan here, oh, it's impossible. I might just swallow just put names in a hat and then draw them out random. Never again. I'm through. I'm through with society, with parties, with friends. I wipe my slate clean. They'll miss my entertainments. they wish that they hadn't been more considered after this. I'm going to live for myself. I'm going to be selfish and hard and unsociable and drink my liquor myself instead of offering it gratis to the whole town. I'm through. Through with men like Oliver Barnesworth. I don't care how rich they are, how influential they are, how important they are. They're nothing without courtesy and consideration. Business off the train. Nonsense. Didn't want to come. Didn't want to meet a sweet, pretty girl. Didn't want to marry her. Well, he's not good enough for you. Don't marry him. Don't you dare marry him. I won't let you marry him. Do you hear? If you try to elope or anything like that, I'd break it off. Yes, I would, Oliver Farnsworth. It will never get recognition for me. He is beneath my notice. I hate Oliver Farnsworth. A note from Mr. Farnsworth, madam. A note from Mr. Farnsworth. Yes, madam. There are two strange gentlemen in the lower hall. They presented this letter. He said he was the secretary. All the other guests are upstairs in the drawing room, madam. I count twelve in all, including you and Mr. Pringle and Miss Elaine. But the two gentlemen downstairs, madam, are waiting for your answer. The one gentleman's face looked very familiar, madam, but I can't place him, although I'm sure I've seen his face somewhere. Seen his face somewhere? Oh my goodness, Elaine, it's the Prince of Wales. The secretary said you cut off the telephone or Central disconnected you. He was about to tell you that Mr. Farnsworth knew that the blizzard had prevented His Highness from keeping an engagement way uptown. The Prince of Wales sitting in my lower hall waiting for me to ask him to dinner. Then we'll be at 13 again. Certainly the secretary, Elaine. We shall be having 14 at dinner, serving those cocktails, Dunham. The guests may sit anywhere they like. But, Mother, wasn't it nice of Oliver Farnsworth to send Prince to his place? Didn't I always say that Oliver Farnsworth was the most considerable of men? I think I shall like Mr. Farnsworth. Silly child, it's too late to like Mr. Farnsworth. It's time to like the Prince. I always manage somehow to be the most successful of hostess. Thank God for the blizzard. And so, the Pringles had an enjoyable feast. Miss Pringle chatted with the Prince of Wales, while Dunham granted his every wish. Elaine peacefully ate at the table without her mother bothering her to talk to a royal prince. You just listened to 14, a drama written by Alex Gerstenberg and produced by Travis Onyet. This production was created by USI Radio Theater. Miss Pringle was voiced by Rachel Lohorn, Elaine voiced by Megan Cassidy, Dunham by Travis Onyet, and the narrator was Aaron Chapman.